Get the clap. Three, two, one. Great. That was horrible. That was a weak ass clap. Dude. My hands aren't working. It's pretty sad. I don't know what to like do. Like we about. actually have a slate that we could bring in. Use if we only had a slate. I'll do this one. Okay, here we go. All right, three, two, one, go. That was like perfect. Perfect. Like we planned that. Like we know what we're doing. Sometimes. I'm gonna throw shit. Just kidding. I got this at Universal <laughs> Studios and I don't want to break it. <laughs> uh, hey guys. It's another Tech Tuesday. Another Tech Tuesday here. And as you can see, we're I'm talking stoked. about. Dude, my favorite thing is stuff. tape. Tape. Literally, when I was a kid, my dad gave me a whole stocking full and like 30 rolls of duct tape, and I loved it. And now all we do with our jobs is play with tape. Yeah. It's awesome. Like you made duct tape wallets and stuff, right? Oh, uh, duct tape wallets. I made a whole entire ski resort out of tape in my dad's office and the chairlift actually worked. Like you could move the chairlift, <laughs> all tape, everything. Okay. Did you make duct tape pants? I didn't do that. Yeah, I had, I friends, that. I had friends in high school I did like duct tape pants. Duct tape little bags or like, yeah, the whole 10. Underwear, but, duct tape underwear. Just wrap a bunch of tape around you. That would hurt. It would hurt coming off, dude. <laughs> That would hurt. <laughs> Someone's tried it. Let us know how it works. No, we're talking about the film industry and what tape does for you in the film industry. I know when I first started out, I didn't really know what it was or like where. Hang on, you didn't know what tape was? You just said your dad bought you. Don't listen to Charles when we do these videos. I'm coming at you guys with a lot of good information and he's just gonna be over here supervising. <laughs> um, but no, really, I was like, gaff tape, paper tape, tape's tape. Can I just go to the store and get colored tape? There's painter's tape at Home Depot. What's the difference? What do you use tape for? And there were so many questions that when I showed up to my first job, I had completely the wrong tape. I had nothing that I needed, and I spent money on places that I didn't need to spend money on. So hopefully we can answer a few of those questions for you today. And if you're a new AC or new into the camera world, you're not gonna waste some money or do some things that you wouldn't need to do. Yeah, so let's break it down and let's talk, let's talk about two of the biggest types of tape that we use on set and their differences and why you better not get them mixed up. I don't know if I have one, a paper one that is in the wrapping still, but uh, gaff tape. Gaff tape is sticky, 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 sticky and rough. Paper tape is essentially paper. The best way to describe this is it feels like painter's tape. Yeah. That blue stuff you get or purple or whatever. And um, gaff tape is really grippy, yeah, more like can... a duct tape. It is, like if you can see this in the close up, Alex. Uh, so like paper tape kind of has like this grid inside of it versus the, or sorry, did I say gaff? Gaff tape has a gaff grid. tape has the grid and it's fabric like, type texture. It's like a fabricy duct tape type of material, and paper tape is smooth and has more of like, you know, painter's tape type of material on it. A little and, bit of a shine. And that's about the difference. This stuff is like gaff tape is like duct tape, and it is not messing around. And then paper tape is kind of like the throw it away, use it all the time for whatever the random stuff is. Yep. So kind you're, you're probably like, do I need gaff? Do I need paper? What is gaff used for? What is paper used for? It's pretty simple, guys. Anywhere that you don't want any residue or any trace of your tape being, paper tape. Any place that you are more like, say, outside, dirtier surfaces, maybe you have a harder time making the tape stick, uh, you don't want it to get kicked around as easy, gaff tape. If you're on painted walls, really nice hardwood floors, paper tape. If you're out in the street, uh, sidewalk, garage floors, gaff tape. Uh, yeah, you don't want to mix them up. And oftentimes I hear new people that are starting out in the industry and they're like, oh, just grab some gaff tape and, and just put it tape. on there. Just grab some gaff. Everybody says gaff because they also don't understand the terminology. There's only one gaffer on set. Um, but there's... Gaff tape is used for the same things that like, you don't want that crap to come off. It will rip the varnish off of a hardwood floor. Yep. It will rip the paint off of a wall. It will break stuff. <laughs> it destroys things. Honestly, like gaff tape, anything you want to take gorilla tape or duct tape to, 
don't put Gorilla Tape on. Now it's, it's not as intense, but very similar, especially when it's all day with studio lights heating it up, environments change, and then you go to just rip it off. Like I've seen so many people ruin people's houses and cars yeah. and different things, guys, when they use gaff tape. It's um, all about the paper, paper tape. Most of the situations when we're on set and when people ask for gaff tape, they really want photo black paper tape. Two inch. And uh, this stuff that's called photo black specifically, that's a brand new roll. Do we have one that's not like a bunch of them? A brand new roll? No one's new. Um, well, you don't want new. No. I don't. But, anyways, way. photo black, there's also different qualities of paper tape. There's the really cheap pho uh, paper tape that you can get online. Like on, I think it's this stuff actually, what is, is the really cheap stuff. Is that ProGaff or no, nothing? No, it's not. It's so not yeah, if there's really nothing, little. there's a few different brands. I would recommend ProGaff. They also make paper as well, um, or Pro Console, um, but the and Pro it's, brand. It's like the difference of like three or four dollars per roll. But, so you but don't this, want this. Yeah. This as an AC, horrible. Now let's talk about tips and tricks of how to avoid this and what to look for when you're taping. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to jump around because there's so much to talk about with tape. There's still other types of tape. Real quick, uh, we have electrical tape. Electrical tape would be used for scenarios such as taping things onto your camera. Uh, a lot of the times we use like red and uh, blue electrical tape to uh, gear. We'll take like little strips, uh, one inch strips and just attach everything for A camera and B camera. Um, this is great for, it sounds silly, but like as AC stuff, you're always ripping up your fingers, so you can just roll it around your fingers real quick like a Band-Aid. Um, Band-Aids. Band-Aids, it helps a lot. <laughs> uh, marking cables. Uh, we also use them for like cable marking for per personal cables. So you know like if you um, buy, if you have your own like BNC cables or HDMI cables and you like are putting them on a camera, you want to make sure you get that stuff back and so we'll like wrap it in like whatever your color is because mm -hmm. you can get any color of uh, electrical tape that you want and so you wrap it up there to make sure that you get your gear back. Uh, you'll throw it on hot media, um, different things. So if you're looking at what tape should I get, where should I start, um, you'll see a bunch of different sizes. There's even gaff tape that comes this small. What would you use this for? Different scenarios, guys. If you want just a smaller, low-profile piece of tape where you don't necessarily want it to just be this huge, long piece of tape on the floor, this stuff is great. You can make little marks with it. What I would recommend when you're like, okay, I'm going to be an AC. Where do I start? What tape do I get? What colors do I get? How much do I get? First and foremost, if you're being hired on a bigger feature film, you probably already know this, but you're going to have an expendables order where you can actually charge the production for this stuff where you're not going out of pocket. I made this mistake my first time. Obviously, you want to be prepared. You don't want to show up empty handed and not have what you need. I went out and spent a bunch of money on all these AC websites and film tools and all this stuff, and I bought a lot of the wrong tape. I spent hundreds of dollars actually and bought a lot of the wrong stuff. And I see so many ACs do it, so please don't do that. If you need tape, nine out of 10 times, another AC on set, just message them or a friend who's an AC. They have so much tape, you guys. The reason being is we put an expendables order in. You don't use all the tape most of the time. Sometimes you will. Uh, but most of the time you'll have some extras and just stuff laying around and that stacks up over time and before you know it you have buckets of tape. I think I have maybe three buckets in the back that are literally just stacked with tape, guys. So yeah. when Alex was first starting out, I was like, don't go buy that stuff. Let's start here. You're going to want a leash. Uh, you can use, people use dog leashes, people use ropes, um, people use lanyards. Yeah, um, just webbing and a clip. Really, whatever you want to use. Some guys get more stylized and fancy with it. Some people keep it more like rock climbing style where you just use a carabiner and some rope. I like this. This is, if you lose it, your day's not ruined and you will lose your tape roll. Someone's going to steal it at some I think point. Accessibility to you. Like the difference is, is like you can hand this when somebody says, hey, I need some tape. You can grab the tape roll is what they call this and then like hand it to them and say, here you go. This is something that, that you would keep more like on your belt yep. and clip it to you. And then this is like your personal, you have it on you all the time as an AC. 
So when this is clipped on my belt or on my chest pack or wherever I have it with me and I'm going on to set, I can't tell you how many times I will mark an actor, grab this tape roll, throw it to my other AC, roll it on the floor so they can mark out their actors. Um, now, what do you want on this tape roll? What's too much tape? What's not enough? Me personally, I like more minimalistic. I leave a rope on my camera cart that has every piece of tape I need and then I leave a smaller leash like this on my personal self. This isn't my personal leash. I probably wouldn't have JLAR and some other colors on here that are on this leash, but I would probably have something like, let's build it out. If you're an AC, you're definitely gonna want red gaff and blue gaff for your A and B camera. You're definitely gonna want some white gaff and some black gaff. And that's about all I would keep for gaff tape. I wouldn't carry more than this on my personal wheel. And then I'm going to want red and blue electrical. And then they make this stuff, is that quarter inch or half inch? Quarter. Quarter inch. Um, and I normally Maybe just keep... Is half. Eh, I don't know. Yeah. But I just keep uh, like a red and a white um, on you. This is for in a situation where someone needs an eyeline mark or needs a mark to see or needs a mark and you don't want to use gaff, maybe a big piece of paper tape is going to be too invasive. I like this skinny stuff. Um, spike tape, right? Really yeah. Yeah, a little spike tape. Um, and then realistically, I'll probably throw maybe like one other paper tape on here to be safe. Um, but that's about as big as I'm going unless we have like a third or fourth actor where I'll keep like a yellow. But this is about all I'm keeping on myself. The one thing I forgot is a two inch paper. Yep. Um, everybody always wants two inch black. So that's about what I would keep on myself as an AC. Um, now one thing you can consider if you're like, holy crap, all that tape. Once you use a tape uh, wheel to about half, that's when I'll throw it onto something like this. So that way you're taking up about as half as much on your short leash. And then I'll keep my brand new tape rolls on my cart. So that way this is a lot less invasive. So they also have options out now that are smaller cores as well. And so you can buy, I, they do cost more. That's the only difference. Um, but you can get the smaller cores. And then if that's what you like keep on your belt when you're running around. So that way you don't have like these massive thing but attached to your belt. I'm going to be that guy. Nothing's more annoying than having an AC who has like a little leash with like eight of these little guys on there and then you need a mark and they're going like <laughs> and they're fiddling with this little piece of tape. That to me as an AC, I'm probably not asking you to come the next day. And um, to that though, why don't you show them there is a proper way of pulling tape off and it's that right there. Oh. And so you can, you can show them why and it, yeah, go ahead. Well, no, with that though, it's, it's true though, if you're on set, practice, if you're being an AC, practice this. You pull it, you turn it while you have your thumb on it and it kind of creates this little diagonal. Then as you go down, it gives you an angle to rip it off of. Then you have a tab. Yep. Um, there's guys on set that can like, and they'll have like three pieces of tape before you know it and you're like, what the hell just happened? And they're already tabbed back on their belt. Yeah, and um, you can see like, all of our tape is already tabbed because we use it all the time um, and it's just the best way so that way you're not sitting there trying to like fumble with it and get it off. I can't tell you how many scenarios I've been in, you're probably going to laugh when I say this, where somebody, your, your key gaff will be like, hey I need two inch black, a uh, uh, three, four inch piece and there will be like an AC going like this, there'll be another electrician like looking for the closest tape wheel and there's always that one guy who has his wheel that goes. And in that moment, your key gaff is going, that guy is on it. He has my back. Now, as the AC, you may have been listening the whole time and fully prepared and you're right there standing, but having that, like those set ears and knowing that's a situation and knowing you have it right here makes you that much more of a, a reliable asset yeah. on set. And people pick up on those little things and that's the difference of getting hired as an AC and not. Um, there's been ACs that 
just marking people and taping people alone, they will never keep this on them. That it's always at their bag or it's always over there. It's always at the cart. And then, uh, you know, your DP or your director will be like, can we get marks? And then as a first AC, you're calling to your second, they're running to go get their tape. And you just look like clowns and it doesn't look good. So be on your stuff, practice marks, know what tape does what, know what tape sticks good. Don't be that guy that rips off paint in a brand new house that they're renting. And don't ruin someone's hardwood floors. And remember, A, or A actor is red, B actor is blue. You mean actor number one? Actor number one, <laughs> red and blue, guys. Please don't mess that up. I can't tell you how many times I get on set, someone goes to mark your actor and they'll grab some random color. And your actors are veterans, guys. They know this. And if you go up to them with a random color of tape and throw it down, that is disrespect and a slap to their face. Um, every time before I start a feature film, I go up to my actors, I communicate their color, they get that color the entire shoot. Um, trick to, I know we keep rambling, but a trick to that, grab a little piece of board, if you have your note board, your camera notes, put all your colors of tape, and then write the actor's name on it. So if you ever need a quick reference, if they call in for Charles tape, I can come in, and I can look at my board and be like, yeah, he's pink, and make sure he's getting marked the right color. And that's usually when you have a cast of more than like three, I would say, you, you yeah. know, where it's like, crap, who, who was what color? And you need to write down, like if you have five cast members, it's kind of hard to remember like who is what color, or if you have eight cast members, you know, and so like writing it down and then giving, assigning those, well, to make little cards, like printouts, the ACs will like assign the colors, like, because we had had movies where we have like 15 cast members mm -hmm. in them. And so like the ACs will sit there and write out like in uh, Excel or whatever and put the color code of each cast member and then their names. So that way we know um, who is who. And then like, we'll put that on the side of the camera. And then me as a camera operator, I can look at it and be like, oh, okay, like has their name and their actor name and then what color they are and we can keep track of all that stuff. And if you're new, you're probably like, that's so redundant, that's so overkill. Guys, it is not. That is what's gonna separate you from being a good AC and a bad AC. If your operator can walk up and he can see a blue mark, a purple mark, and a yellow mark, and know those are his three actors, and know that this actor's taller, this actor's shorter, and this one sways back and forth, your first AC's gonna look and be like, okay, when they get to the orange mark, that actor sways. When they get to the yellow, and there's all these small little details that your operator and your AC are like learning about your actors. And then imagine being an actor. You show up on set, there's a thousand things going on. All you want to do is find your color mark, go stand there and tell me when to act. And so if you can make their life easier and make your operator's life easier, you're gonna get that next job. Yeah. So sorry for rambling a bunch, guys. I know this was probably a long video. You're probably almost falling asleep right now, but it's good information, it's good stuff, and if you can learn the little things, it'll separate you. So real quick, let's also talk about this stuff. Ooh. We use it all the time, and I would say this is definitely something that you either need to have in your kit or pick up when you're on your next show, and that is Velcro. Velcro. And specifically Velcro that has the sticky, um, on, the, on the sticky, it's tape? like it's like sticky glue it's like uh, it's yeah. a it's sticky i don't know what you call it um tips, velcro is sticky tips and tricks for this guys <laughs> um on your slate throw some pieces of velcro for like slate tab numbers on your map boxes for your camera tags um anything that you're replacing a lot and doing quick stuff velcro will be your best friend we use velcro all the time like all the time like if you're in a situation where you just need to slap something onto a camera it's Velcro. So what's the rule? So the soft stuff is always going to go on your camera bodies, your monitors, your different things that you're going to attach things to. And then your sticky stuff, your rough things are going to go to like camera tags, patches, and different things. And the main reason for that is if you're wearing a chest pack or different um, things like filter bags, they have the soft stuff and you can actually stick your tags inside of those filter bags. Um, or if you have a sweatshirt you don't care about, you could literally just stick a few on your sweatshirt, you're in a pinch, throw your camera tag there, mess here, then put it away. So makes it really easy to really attach it to any and everything. Yep. We actually keep this stuff like 
If you look at our Pelican cases to our camera carts, there's like soft Velcro everywhere. We just strip this stuff everywhere. Um, I like it on like Pelican corners too. If you don't want to beat stuff up, if you're going into a house that you don't want to scratch stuff up, this makes good little bumpers for corners and soft edges. Yeah, we use it like on, in, on our city cams actually. We'll put it in between, like we'll mount the soft side to the gold mount plate or a V mount plate. Yep. And then when you put the battery on there, it's like a little buffer so the battery doesn't shake. Cause you don't want any wobbling when you're doing the city cam stuff. And so like there's so many uses for the soft side of Velcro and hard side of Velcro. Um, but it, we wanted to include it with the tape because it's sticky in both senses and it's- Do not it buy Velcro though. It's very expensive. So put it on an expendables order, get a job where you can do that. If you don't have that opportunity and maybe you're working on some smaller projects or in film school, maybe you do have to purchase it. Um, but it's something you want in your kit. Yeah. Don't skip over the Velcro. All right, we're done rambling your guys' ear off. I think that there is a takeaway to take from what tape is, is it's almost its own language on set. It's its own silent communicator. And you as the AC, you're kind of like orchestrating that through your set with your tape. Um, so whether that's through gear or for actors or just like distinguishing between your team's different roles, um, your tape is like your kind of lifeline or your communication kind of so yeah uh, don't underestimate it guys definitely take your tape very serious as an AC cool well hope you guys learned something you have to take that away with us and uh, yeah go get some tape and practice <laughs> ripping it off uh, <laughs> if not we'll catch you on the next one and please like and subscribe thank you guys